ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम पंचदशी इज अ टेक्स्ट रिटन बाय विद्यारण्य स्वामी एंड दिस बुक हैज फिफ्टीन चैप्टर्स फिफ्टीन इज पंच पंचदशी मीन्स फिफ्टीन दैट्स ऑल ही नेम एंड द फर्स्ट फाइव चैप्टर्स ऑफ दिस पंचदशी दे डील विद सत द सेकेंड सेट ऑफ फाइव चैप्टर्स दे डील विद चित एंड द लास्ट फाइव चैप्टर्स डील विद आनंद it's one of the most fantastic expositions that i have ever come across and once swami ji took took it for us in the ashram it has just caught my fancy and over the last 15 20 years this is the third round in melbourne i am doing of the panchadashi now and today we will see just the the thought that is given in the brahmananda yogananda it says brahma vit param apnoti you can repeat brahma vid param apnoti shokam tarati chatmavit shokam tarati chatmavit raso brahma rasam labdhva raso brahma rasam labdhva nandi bhavati nanyatha nandi bhavati nanyatha hmm? brahma vid param apnoti shokam tarati chatmavit raso brahma rasam labdhva anandi bhavati na anyatha the knower of brahman this is the this is the beginning <laughs> verse of the anand the last five chapters and straight away the teacher hits the the jackpot <laughs> he wants everyone to understand under what, what is the goal what is the purpose what is the experience what will be the vision what will be the symptom everything in one verse and here he says दो नोअर ऑफ ब्रह्मन अटेन्स सुप्रीम ब्लेस ब्रह्म विदम परमात्मोति एंड व्हाट हैपेंस एज अ रिजल्ट एंड द नोअर ऑफ द सेल्फ इन इज एसेंशियल नेचर टू बी इनफाइनाइट ब्लेस ट्रांसेंड्स द मिजरीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड व्हिच इज शोकम तरति चात्म विद द वन हु हैज नोन द सेल्फ इफ वी आर सीकर्स वी हैव गॉट नो एक्सक्यूज टू बी मिजरेबल अंडर एनी सरकमस्टांसेस that is one symptom hmm? then transcends the miseries of the world of relative existence the self is of the nature of bliss raso brahma rasam labdhva uh, having discovered this blissful self one attains infinite bliss <coughs> anandi bhavati na anyatha knowledge of the identity this is the conclusion <coughs> knowledge of the identity between the self and brahman is the only way to attain supreme bliss hmm? there is no other way then what is the other way if this is the only way then what will be the other way huh? no no what will be the other ways of knowing bliss <laughs> the other ways are karma rituals upasana studies of scriptures these are all uh, have to be given up in order to know the identity between the self and the brahman but there is a way no but there is no way in the end we have to give it all up because these are words aprapya manasasah truth cannot be known through the mind yato vacho nivartante the words return from that infinite reality so do not who doing yourself into thinking that sadhana is the ultimate means no you are always in spite of sadhana you are the we are talking about the anand aspect so all those other questions have already been answered, answered and dealt with and worked out what is sadhana what is its importance all that has been worked out in the previous 10 chapters hmm? 
Now we are coming to the bliss, <coughs> bliss aspect. So here he says, the <coughs> Swami Anubhananji says, his commentary. <coughs> Knowledge or Jnanam takes place at three levels. First, objective knowledge or Jnanam or, or knowledge of objects takes place at in two stages. First is Vritti Vyapti and second is Phala Vyapti. Huh? What does that mean? That I, that this is a camera, I know this is a camera, this is Phala Vyapti. This is a camera is Vritti Vyapti. I know this is a camera is full of is a conclusion. Hmm? This is how knowledge takes place in our mind. Second, Atma Jnanam is the knowledge that I am Atma. Do you need anything else to know that you are the Atma? Do you need anything else to know that you are the life force? Do you need anything else, any thought, any word, any experience, any uh, uh, means in order to know that you are a living entity? Then be that, story over. Then be that and your story is over. You are walking, talking ma Brahman. <laughs> then, but we do not accept it. We because of our, because of our obsession with name and form. That is the reason. So here, he is straight away coming to the crux. He says, Atma Jnanam is the knowledge of that or knowledge that I am Atma. This initiates an analysis of what is meant by Atma and through Panchakosha Vivek, which was told in chapter 3, leads to the point where the understanding takes place that I am Chaitanya and there is no difference between the knower and known. So in the Anand, uh, now this, uh, what do you call, the last five chapters of Ananda, which is beginning, just like deep sleep state is the source of waking and dream, similarly, this Ananvaya Kosh or this, uh, mm, from the Atmic self point of view, there is no difference between the knower and the known. And this analysis is taken, we may, may not, if time, depending on time, we'll go into that. But one thing we have to understand, that realization means coming to know that this self that I am alone is Brahman. Means what? It means that every, not only I am conscious, but everything that is known, I am the consciousness, and everything that is known is inert, is existence. All consciousnesses and all inertnesses, means all names and forms, is I alone. This must be the <laughs> realization. This must be your uh, disposition. And that is Brahmatma Kebod. And then the last one he says, now that's what he's saying now, Brahma Jnanam. So first was Atma Jnanam, now it is Brahma Jnanam. At Atma Jnanam level, everything known and every knower, I alone am. And at the Brahma Jnanam level, I am Atma, is not the final knowledge. The final Jnanam is, this Atma that I am is not limited to me alone, but everywhere I alone am. What will be the realization, I took this example in his house, what will be the realization of a cell in your body who realizes that he is actually the total? <laughs> huh? What will be the realization of the wave which re comes to give up its waveness and comes to realize the waters? That everything, ev past, present, future, all the waves I am and this experience will be a thought-free experience. It cannot be through thoughts. And that, in other words, it will be as a result of grace. This final jnanam <coughs> is the Atma that I am is not limited to me alone, but everywhere I alone am, Sarvam Khalvedam Brahma. In other words, the self that is me is the self that is all. In other words, I alone is. That is the only thing that there is. And this Anubhav, this Aparoksha Anubhuti that is taking place, it is without a thought. And even if that thought comes that I alone is, the person 
to whom this the thought is coming to the mind this person has come to realize that every thought in the mind i all of man he doesn't see anything just like you at this moment with this extreme identification you do not see yourself other than the body you don't see yourself as other than the thoughts isn't it do whatever you do not you have to imagine yourself to be you will have thoughts about it do you keep thinking every day that i am the body i am the body i am the body no why because you have identified with it so much do you keep saying that i am a thinking person i am a thinking person when thinking starts going then you start worrying that i must increase my <laughs> mental power do crosswords do sudoku sudoku and all those stuff otherwise i lose my mind when it starts leaving but till it was there you didn't even think about it you just felt that i am the thoughts also imagine this idea this experience expanded ad infinitum to include the entire srishti how will it be how will it be how will be the experience of waters which includes all the waves what will be his experience can exactly you can't even the from water's point of view there is no wave <laughs> from ocean's point of view ocean says all the waves are in me they are part of me but water from water's point of view there is no wave he alone is i alone am and it's a unstruck experience <coughs> thought free experience unconditioned say that again unconditioned. unconditioned knowledge that's right unconditioned knowledge natural or normal ha ah, it's the most natural way to be it is the most natural way to be but we are not being the natural unnaturality begins as doership and enjoyership that is unnatural where these two merge dissolve away there the the natural the, the real you starts expressing naturally without any efforts is it what is meant by pradibodha vidhita Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. but it is not a process through your mind it is atma bodh it is atma bodh yes you will use the words we are using here also we are using the words but these words are transporting us to somewhere where which is not which is beyond the words <clears throat> the brahma vet now this is very beautiful <coughs> the brahmavit is one who has discovered all that all that all the knowers and knowns of the waking state and all the knowledge collected by all the pairs of knowers and known are i alone <laughs> how will this happen that all the knowers and known is i alone how will it how will we come to it ha beyond, huh, beyond comprehension why we are saying that because we are too obsessed with the uh, the division we are too obsessed with the differences we are too obsessed with the sense of otherness beyond comprehension includes uh, when you say that that means he said it if, if something is comprehended it is not uh, again it is a thought knowledge it is again a intellectual knowledge it is may, maybe it is an intellectual appreciation it even is an that, imagination even that word beyond comprehension should not be used no and that is why nyaneshwar maharaj in amrut anubhav he says even the word sat chit anand are null and defunct to describe the reality that you are sat chit anand are only there i think last time somewhere i talked about this sat is to cancel asat chit is to cancel achit and anand is used by the scriptures to cancel dukham it is not to prove that reality is sat chit anand it is only to cancel the negative uh, reference so you say so not say angles or angles if you don't want to use beyond which is separation then we can say that it angles so something that who angles yes thank you yeah. angles who angles. no no that that um, what we can't describe or comprehend hmm. angles all that well in the sense it 
Yeah, as an in, as an individual, as an individual, this is some way we can express. Hmm. Can we say the water engulfs all the waves? <laughs> we can't say that. Does the does the gold engulf all the ornaments? We cannot use that word. It's already that. But in a way of expression, it is told because we feel that the sleep engulfs our mind. Then when we get obsessed with something in the world, that thing, that person, that object, that beloved engulfs our mind <laughs> or attracts our mind or uh, uh, and we get attracted towards it and we are not able to think of anything else. We get as if sucked into that particular thought, idea, fantasy, imagination, person, isn't it? Sometimes when hunger comes, hunger engulfs, uh, it totally devours our mind. We can't think of anything but food. So in that sense, because we are from individual standpoint of your thinking, yes. But here he's taking the point of view from the Brahman. So here is the, the realized person. The Brahmavit is one who has discovered all the knowers and knowns of the waking state and all the knowledge collected by all the pairs of opposites, pairs of knowers and known, are I alone. This vision is one of totality where individuality has no meaning. Such a Brahmavit attains perfect unconditional bliss. He transcends all problems. Param is that state where the knower, the chit, and the known, the sat, do not condition each other, where their differences is obliterated, obliterated, and there is only a state of anandam. Thus, Brahmananda is Sukha Prapti, the last stage in the process of attaining Aparoksha Anubhuti. Hmm? So what does it mean? That all the differences start melting into each other. They get dissolved. Is that your experience on a daily basis? Yes. Well, it is, but uh, it is. We don't focus it is. On that. Every day, every moment, this is happening to you. Scriptures only give us the vision to catch what is already taking place. So, whether you take it at the daily level, the entire pairs of opposites, which is our waking world or dream world, gets absorbed, becomes unmanifest, becomes all of, both of them merge and become deep sleep, in deep sleep, isn't it? Un unmanifest. You take Japa, Vaikhari, Madhyama, Pashyanti, Para. By the time you reach Pashyanti, here, the object of knowledge and uh, the, the thought of the object and the object of knowledge are separate. At the uh, subtler level, the thought of the object and object, uh, they are both subtle and both of them merge in the Pashyanti. There is no difference. See? So what is meditation? Meditation is not continuously thinking thoughts. Meditation is where the knower and known both merge into each other. That's when meditation takes place. See? As long as you keep yourself as separate to the no, to the object meditated, you will keep thinking about it. But when we are, up, if it is our Lord, the picture is there, we keep, we full devotion and faith, we meditate on Him. Our mind becomes totally devoured or, uh, what was the word you used? Engulfed, Engulfed by Him. <laughs> he takes over the whole mind. And now in that mind there is nothing other than that picture of the Lord. You are in Savikalpa Samadhi because mind has become quietened. You and that picture have become one. Then you and that sound have become one. See? This is minimum requirement. Sadhana is not just continuously thinking, 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 thinking or doing, doing, doing. Thinking is also doing only. <coughs> and as long as there is doership that I have to study, I have... I'm not against, I'm also teaching only, no? <laughs> but we must, every thinking process, every contemplation must lead to transcendental silence. Must lead to. If it is not happening, then there's something wrong in our uh, uh, approach. If we are taking, doing japa, that japa must lead us to silence. If that is not taking place and we are finishing 108 times and then getting up and starting 
then some, somewhere we have gone wrong in our approach to doing japa. If you are doing havan, same thing. If that havan is not prompting us to be silent afterwards, then uh, it has, the, the, per, the opportunity is lost for that moment because uh, the silence can come only in that moment. It can't come in the future. But for that, we have to have the right mental makeup, the right approach, the right dedication, the right uh, uh, devotion and faith. All those things have to come together. I keep giving this example every time. Just like every night before going to sleep, we get all our faculties in such a way that we allow, we don't know what sleep is. It's a no mind state. But we allow that no mind state to devour our mind, isn't it? We surrender ourselves to it completely, wholly. It, we allow it to engulf us, <laughs> to devour us, to suck us into itself, not knowing where we are going. But we know this much, that it is very peaceful. It is very rejuvenating. It is very invigorating. Imagine, and that is only for a few hours, but imagine we are thinking for last so many years about the Paramatma. Have we allowed him to engulf us, uh, suck us into himself? Have we allowed our, our, our mind to be sucked by the Paramatma? Just like we allow the sleep to suck our mind or devour our mind. If we allow the Paramatma or the Lord to do that, for the rest of your life you will be in bliss. Then you will not need sleep. In sleep, whatever pains you have, whatever disease you have, whatever whatever ailments you have, whatever problems in the world you have, all of them become zero when you are in sleep, isn't it? Imagine much more powerful than that, that if we allow our mind to be merged, to be taken over by the divine, create that condition by the divine, then permanently it is over. <laughs> You will not be aware. That's what it is told here. Shokam Tarati Chatma Vida. That for such a Brahmavid, there is no more any sorrow, no more miseries, no more sense of otherness, no more duality, no more uh, 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 difference that I and you. Then his experience is all that there is, is I. I is. That's it. Full stop. And this statement is also not through the mind it is just a natural state it's a natural disposition which is all inclusive okay. is a term called the effortless self orientation effortless absolutely absolutely it must whatever suppose we are studying right now for one hour or whatever time we take, it must lead to that. So we are starting with efforts. I am speaking, you are listening, this is all efforts. But it must lead to, uh, effortlessly it must glide into <laughs> effortless self-orientation. Just like we make efforts to go to sleep, but effortlessly, effortlessly, when we, it's only required for one fraction of a second, that effortlessness, and uh, <laughs> you are gone. You, from thinking of sleep, you are gone to sleep. So here also that, and that comes only by grace. So here also create such a condition in your mind with such in, relaxed intensity, relaxed devotion, no stress, no agitation, no uh, uh, restlessness. Don't get distracted by anything. And come to focus so that all the effort that you are putting only one fraction of a moment that effortlessness is required and you're, you will be absorbed into the divine. It's like going to visit Shunyam. Shunyam, yes, they, they say Shunyam. Uh, but Brahma, re realization is not Shunyam. It is a, uh, it is a solid reality because you are. It is not nothing. Purnam from a standpoint. It is Purnam. It is Purnam. Yeah, so yes, uh, from the standpoint. So, from which standpoint? The, if you are saying still from the standpoint, if you think that you are still an individual, then it may appear as <coughs> an individual. 
But if it is going to show yeah. from it, I will tell you what, what. What is the problem? Attention of those thinkers. If your attention is on the mind, you will. Lead, it will lead to shunyam. If your attention is on the one who is aware of the empty mind and is not disturbed by the busy mind or the empty mind, manifest or the unmanifest mind, then you will come to be the Brahmavit. Then it is not Shunyam. This is what my understanding is. When you say it is not Shunyam, are you objectifying it? Objectifying what? I am answering him. I am answering him, trying to, so that he his mind doesn't get caught up in something. You cannot call it anything, even the word. Yeah, uh, so even if we are using the word Brahma and we are objective, we are given it a name. But that which is beyond all names, we are given him a name. That which cannot be understood, we are trying to understand. That which cannot be gained, we are trying to gain it. So. This, if I, if, I, if I start talking like this, then there's nothing to do. <laughs> and, and that is the truth. There is nothing to do. But we can't stop not doing something. So let our doing be in that direction which leads to non-doing. <laughs> I understood. Just like he said, effortless self, what was that? Orientation. Orientation. So you have to put efforts in order to let it become effortless. You have to do something in order to, uh, let, so that it leads to non-doing. And then you transcend doing and non-doing. Then you transcend doing and non-doing. Yeah. Because this manifestation and unmanifestation of your, uh, uh, that is taking place is only at the level of mind. It is not at the level of spirit. Atma. It is not at the level of Atma. So if you want to take it at a total uh, day level, waking and dream are the manifestation and deep sleep is the unmanifestation. Instead of thinking that I am becoming unmanifest, no, mind is going through this yo-yo of manifesting and unmanifesting. I am the observer of it. Then who is more important, the waker, dreamer, deep sleeper with their experiences or the one who knows that this whole phenomena is taking place? See? And the moment you fall, start suspecting this, that I am someone other than this phenomena, then suddenly, uh, 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 now this is what I am talking now, is in the second uh, second set of five chapters. This is not a part of Ananda. <laughs> we are coming to Ananda where we are gone through that process of uh, what is Atma. Huh? We have gone through that process already. Now we are coming into establishing ourselves into the ananda and ananda can come and remain become permanent only when we realize that this entire srishti entire creation is i alone then only ananda will come otherwise you'll go into samadhi or you'll go into contemplation and come out and say oh the world is making it difficult for me to meditate <laughs> Or this is not the uh, this is this seat is not comfortable for me to meditate, or this temple has got uh, uh, good energy. That temple, oh, it was not something. This group is good. That group is not good. Then you are still into judgment because, I, or there is a feeling that I have come to know uh, the self and others are still ignorant. So I have to do something to uh, better the world. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> he will fall. <laughs> it's all the play of the mind, no? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So to think that I have realized myself is also a play of the mind. When Aparokshanubhuti takes place, there is nothing called I have come to, <laughs> I have realized. It is a natural state. So a person was asked, uh, Someone asked uh, someone, Raman Mahatma, Swamiji, are you realized? He said, yes and no. Yes and no. <coughs> because, yes, as I know it, no, because I don't know what you are thinking. <laughs> what, what is the concept of realization for you? See? Same example I took at his place also, the chocolate one. If if you have not tasted chocolate, you can you can keep reading about chocolate in scriptures after scriptures after scriptures after scriptures. This is the bliss. But you have never tasted it. 
you can only talk about it, but you have got no aparokshanubhuti is not there. So we are talking, taking example of chocolate. But once you have taken chocolate, and if the rest of the world has not tasted the chocolate, talk as much as you want. <laughs> you can never convince them, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> same is our same is the position of uh, Brahmavid. Then such a person lives a fearless existence. Such a person lives a life of uh, absolute, um, uh, what do you call it? Freedom. No. Freedom and effortless living. He is at the right place, at the right time, with the right people, in the right circumstances, not demanding anything, not rejecting anything. Uh, I keep using this term accepting everything, rejecting nothing, and retaining nothing. This is his disposition. Whatever comes to him, he accepts. Because if he starts rejecting, again he is accepting that the world is separate to him. But also not creating a memory. And why will the memory not get created? Because he is established in himself. His attention is ever on the, uh, the, the Atma. That's why. The moment it shifts from the Atma to something outside, even, even to I know this is that and I know this is that, immediately the division begins. And you, we cannot even imagine how a realized person functions. What will be his vision? Scriptures only give us a glimpse of it. They tell it may be like this, it may be like that, it may be like this. Here also he is saying that all the miseries will be gone. Then, raso brahma rasam labdhva. He is ever, just like we are sucking on that chocolate in our mouth, he is ever sucking on to the, <laughs> the, the bliss of Brahman, the bliss of the self, ever. Never coming down from it. Just like some people, uh, children, not people, children, they go to sleep and you want to wake them up. But the sleep is... They are enjoying the sleep. Ah, and again they go back. <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is the word. Raso Brahma Rasam Labdava. <laughs> so they are, they are enjoying the sleep so much that no amount of attraction from the outside world will make them come out. And this is only about sleep. You Probably we also go through that in the morning sometimes. But imagine someone who is experiencing <coughs> Million, zillion times the bliss of that uh, deep sleep state. Who will want to come down from that? Impossible. And therefore, anandi hmm, bhavati uh, na anyata. This is the only way. This is the uh, state of realization, and there is no other way. Meaning. Then he qualifies this afterwards in next few verses. That means continuously contemplating that this Atma that I am, because we have already done the previous 10 chapters of Panchadashi, that this Atma that I am alone is that infinite reality, alone is that Brahman. Continuously maintaining that connection, keeping that, uh, that, that contemplation will lead to <laughs> A realization. It will all the other upasanas, all the other karma kandas, all the other studies of scriptures must lead to this conclusion that uh, that I am is alone the infinite reality. And when we are focused, because we have already come to know that we are the self. Now, once we are known that we are the self, then this self alone is that infinite. Keep contemplating, keep contemplating. And what is that contemplation? Keep remaining merged into the self alone. The penultimate stage in realization that Anubhuti is Shoka Nivritti. Hence, Shokam Cha Charati Atmavet. He who has discovered that he is Atma, that he is Aparichinna, not limited by time, space and objects. He transcends all the miseries. Since all miseries arise, only with reference to these three factors. How is this possible? Raso Brahma. The nature of the Brahman is Rasa. Those who are established in Brahma Tattva, those who have discovered the joy of aloneness, 
they are totally fulfilled in their existence they have transcended the limitations of becoming and are established in the joy of being so they do not want to become brahman they don't want to become the self they have recognized that they are the self they have recognized that they are the they are the brahman no doubt about it and that, how do you remove that doubt initially through scriptures through sadhana through single pointed of mind but eventually it must leave, come from uh, must be revealed from the atmic principle not through words it's coming from the experience of being that and now i'm again using a, a word from the experience of being that if you are being there is no experience <laughs> okay it is there is no experience they have transcended the ha uh, they have transcended the limitations of becoming and are established in the joy of being rasam labdha anandi bhavati having discovered his total independence as his and his own ananda swarup he attains nirankusha tripti anyatha na other than this method of discovering the identity between the limited i and the absolute i there is no other way so continuously we must be contemplating not on what this person has said that person has said and be uh, intellectual grades in comparative comparative study no apply it subjectively apply it subjectively get the nichod in hindi it's nichod get the suck out the essence of everything that you have studied and after having sucked it out don't just appreciate it no apply it on, <laughs> on the subject that you are that the, all this mm, essence is a, me is the real me it is not some other entity or some other being and the moment that happens wisdom will dawn then you will write your own scriptures in other words only by direct immediate experience of the brahman one attains supreme bliss there is no other way to attain this any amount of thinking and searching from the point of view of the limited with will only lead to unlimited misery limited if we are taking anything uh, lim limited i will just put it in one word limited thought is limited right so if we look at it from the point of view of thought we are missing the target missing missing the bull's eye atma is not a thought atma is in spite of the thought isn't it see when you are lost in say bhajan tv what happens there mind Do settles you, mind all oh, that's all that happens so you because first limbs of yourself you may you may you may but if it, if the glimpse of the self has come then slowly slowly everything will drop away completely if we are finding that we have entered into bliss after bhajan and and then the world continues to be the same after we come out of that uh, deep uh, meditation or silence understand it was only a mental state it was not a <laughs> realization because you have to experience the self only once and there will be no doubt that this whole phenomena is nothing once you have to touch heat fire you know it is hot once you have to touch water you know it is wet do you have to keep testing it again and again similarly once we have to come to know the self there is no doubt left after that once you have become a mother is there any doubt left that you are still a virgin not possible is there any doubt that you are a mother and a nurturing uh, and you have to take care of the child no doubt left but all the doubts are before <laughs> how will it be how will it not be can you go back to being a virgin not possible can you go back to being a bachelor not possible after marriage isn't it same way once the individuality comes to merges and comes to realize that i am the atma 
thought free experience aparoksha anubhuti there is no question of falling back no question of falling back that will remain with you forever you can dream and imagine what the bachelor days were like <laughs> mind can do that but the fact is you are a married or you are a father you can you can revere in those in those memories of the bachelor days but you cannot go back to bachelorhood isn't it similarly once you realize you cannot go back to individuality <laughs> that is the price that we will have to pay panchadashi explains i'm answering your question what happens after bhajan in the last chapter of panchadashi which i took which i took at his place the four points i took dukha dukha bhava second was kamapti hi dukha bhava removal of absence of misery is bliss kamapti hi desire fulfillment is bliss now that point will take here desire is at the level of thought isn't it that we have desire for oh, I, he gave me a medicine okay fantastic now i'll be thirsty i'll take water what happens when a desire is fulfilled what happens huh? ah what is that so has the bliss that we have experienced which is fulfillment of desire is it on account of the object that we have gained no, the bhajan that we have just now listened or chanted yes. or is it our nature which has revealed itself because yes. the mind has become yes. quiet yes. for few moments isn't it so same thing happens in bhajan also that we are so engrossed in bhajan so surrendered to the the chanting and that will happen at uh, the japa level also same thing will happen that our mind surrenders to that or get, becomes one with that and uh, it becomes calm and the moment thought eruption in the mind settles down at that very moment the bliss which we are which is our nature it suddenly comes forth we feel the thrill we feel the hurry pulsation we feel the bliss in our mind we feel the exam uh, the tears start flowing the hair stand on end all these are different uh, manifestations of that bliss or there can be absolute silence and you are in samadhi that is also bliss see and that is our natural state and is that right now not it is also right now but right now our mind is so busy that it is not able to uh, reveal itself just because there is umbrella over my head, head and I, there is shade does that mean sun is not there sun is there see so we have created a umbrella of thoughts and we are not able to see the in defined light which is in whose light i am seeing the umbrella of thoughts <laughs> <laughs> that is our problem <coughs> when that umbrella of thought starts dissolving away the light become the light was already you didn't create it it is already there so the atma reveals itself at that moment as bliss see so where where are we making the mistake instead of taking it to be our nature we are saying the mind was in bliss we are only oh then we say oh if i do bhajans mind will become quiet and i'll be at bliss then i'll do japa then i'll be mind will become quiet i'll be in bliss and this is what we have been doing from childhood till now go after one desire after another desire after another desire because instead of accepting i am of the nature of bliss we are superimposing it on the various objects and thinking that by drinking water i will become calm by going to sleep i will become calm by whatever in the do, doing something enjoying something because we have made it a habit in our mind to associate with some object or time space objectivity with take that conditioning superimpose on it with the body with the body of course that is the that is the ultimate that isn't is the it thing. absolutely so let it let this phenomena of body the phenomena of breathing the phenomena of mind let it continue do not interfere with it 
instead take a cup of tea or take a i had a mango shake before i came so take a mango shake <laughs> sit down and observe the game start with the outside world come to the body watch how the breath is also going on by itself how the mind is going on itself while you are observing the mind sometimes the if you're there sitting there for quite a few minutes suddenly one doze will come you will come back again again continue observing oh the mind went to sleep the mind came awake i am observing both come to that poise that undis undisturbed poise say that again that usually happens when you're studying for exam <laughs> say that again that usually happens when we study for exam oh <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it happens if if you become subjective same thing will happen and we are very sincere we are all sincere that's why we are here we are pursuing this path and whenever the sleep comes understand mind is quieting down don't blame yourself that again i lost the plot again a uh, sleep has come my god no mind has become quiet now instead of blaming yourself that i went to sleep take a different approach okay if i do if this is taking place the mind becomes quiet can i find a way to remain awake when the mind becomes uh, quiet sleep comes when mind becomes quiet i get sucked into see mind only knows uh, if it becomes quiet it goes to sleep or it uh, goes into coma or it goes into samadhi find one more is death that also mind is not there so can i turn this sleep and become aware of sleep that that should be our approach rather than beating ourselves down that i went to sleep i think i'm i'm not a good spiritual seeker or i'm not growing further no you are growing very much because you are falling to mind is becoming quite more often <laughs> <laughs> fantastic so, getting sleepy is a good sign huh? it's a sign that the mind is becoming quiet i was going to say that i mean, don't don't misunderstand me uh, i am saying sleep is coming because the mind is becoming silent it is becoming thought free now before the sleep comes initiate some find out in your yourself not scriptures are giving you so much gamut of ways of approach you have to find your own that now can i how can i turn the sleep into samadhi because samadhi is also zero mind sleep is also zero mind in sleep i am ignorant of the zero mind in samadhi i am aware of the zero mind now that shift requires an a, a poise a wakefulness a subjective approach sleep is coming because of objective approach if it is subjective approach sleep will not come and even if it comes and the mind becomes quiet you are still awake to that sleeping mind because self cannot sleep that is the subtle difference between tamasic and sattvic absolutely uh, the, the, we are gone beyond sattvic also now yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we are gone beyond sattvic okay. also sattvic tamasic rajasic is only at the level of mind but what i am explaining to you is what she asked that after bhajan we go into uh, we go into silence we experience the bliss what is that now then that experience i am expl explaining to you that many times during the sadhana the sleep comes don't beat yourself down understand it from a different point of view that sleep is coming because mind has become quiet is there a way i can instead of falling a prey to sleep i can become aware of sleep or aware of a quiet mind while it is taking place for that the sadhana is given guru ke tha gnanesh apna our uh, our uh, our round marishi says or in uh, in our chanting then our attention goes it is told you put your attention where the breath is beginning and where the breath is ending be aware alert or if you are chanting your mantra chant the mantra loudly don't make it silent by choice let it become silent by itself but and when will it become silent if your attention is on the mantra it will keep going like a tape recorder but if your attention is 
where the mantra is beginning from, where the mantra is ending, what is where it is merging back into, you will become awake and the mind will become silent. And this, this is this is very very subjective. You have to for that you have to you have to catch that moment. <laughs> And that moment is available with every breath. That moment is available with every uh, mantra. And here in Panchadashi it is told, it is available all the time. Be that. There is no other way to attain this. Any amount of thinking and searching from the point of view of the limited will only lead to unlimited misery. Whereas the line of thinking or the vision from the absolute point of view will limit all the miseries. Therefore, the whole purpose of spiritual sadhana is to develop that angle of vision with which the Lord is looking at the world. This is the method of explaining the truth by affirming that he who knows the truth obtains absolute bliss. So instead of continuously taking the approach of what is that I am an individual, the world is real, but what about the other miserable people? What about the hungry and the homeless? What about the wars? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Get out of it. If we have studied for so, so many years, our attention always should be, what will the Lord be thinking? If he could see the whole world, what will be his take on the whole world? What will be his take on the whole world? He is the material cause of the whole world and he is the efficient cause of the whole world. Now, what will he say? That he, Will he say this is good, this is bad? Will he say this is not me, this is me? <laughs> will he say this is uh, uh, Sattvic Rajasik Tamasik? <laughs> I am talking from Lord's point of view. Will he say this is Sattvic Rajasik Tamasik? No. Nothing. And yet he says. He supports all those expressions in the in the individual, but he is transcendental. From his point of view, nothing like that is. So if that, if we take that position, stop taking that position in the outside world. Do it in your meditation. Outside you do it, you will be miserable, very miserable, very difficult. It must happen naturally in the outside world. And how will it uh, percolate into the outside world? When you have experienced you have taken that position in your meditation. So do your japa, do your mantra, do your uh, chanting, whatever, do your meditation. And before you get into an empty mind and go to sleep or whatever, take a position. What will be the position of the, uh, the, the infinity to, uh, to the finite? What will be the take of water with respect to all the waves? What will be the take of gold? with respect. So take that example, but immediately apply it subjectively. If I am this person, then what should be my take with respect to all the thoughts that are appearing in my mind? What should be my take with respect to the waker dreamer and deep sleeper who are coming and going in my mind? Should I, uh, should I have vairagya towards them? Or should I include them? We are in the Anand, the last five chapters. The Vairagya part was in the first ten chapters. <laughs> now we are in the five. First Neti, then Anvaya. Anvaya is all inclusiveness. But in all inclusiveness, do not try it in the outside world. You will come to problems. Try it in your meditation. First include your whole mind. Because the whole world is in your mind. Once you include every thought, good, bad, ugly, transcendental, you, once you include all the wakers, dreamers, deep sleepers as an expression or as a manifestation, the glory of this I alone, that all this is me, then automatically that uh, abidance will express, will have its own fragrance when you move around in this world. And such people we called as Mahatmas. Automatic, our, we, we feel the love towards them, we feel attracted, we feel at peace in their presence. Why? Because they are at peace with themselves. That is why.
So the answer is not outside. Answer is you, and therefore tattva masi, you are that. If you say our answer is not outside, answer is inside. Again, we are creating duality. Answer is you. Means that in the presence of the Mahatma, that means you are feeling an affinity with him. No, that's that's all. Mm. If you are sitting in front of fire, you will feel the heat. Mm. That is not your realization. That is borrowed heat. <laughs> it's not your own heat. So when we are in the presence of a Mahatma and we feel calm, it is his mental peace, he, it is expanding. Therefore, those Mahatmas who are in the Himalayas, they don't need to come down to the world. Their mind has included the entire universe. Those vibrations are happening everywhere. So when we come into the presence of so many Mahatmas come to, Melbourne, uh, to uh, Australia, and in their presence, if we are feeling that peace and, uh, you know, uh, untold joy, <laughs> it is... Not because of your mind has become calm in their uh, vibration. That's all that has happened. Now that can be a trigger. If this is how I can be in a presence of a person, why can't I be with myself all the time like that? Can I duplicate it within me myself? Find a way. See? No Mahatma, no teacher, can ever make you realize. You have to realize yourself. Because you are that. And that will only happen when we are subjective. So, just that. When one is firmly establishing one's essential blissful self, he attains fearlessness. However, when one accepts even a little of duality, he is destined to repeated transmigrations and fearful existence. Now, having stated the first verse, which was Brahma with Paramapnoti, Shokam Tarati Chatmavit, Raso Brahma Rasam Labdva, Anandi Bhavati, Na Anyatha. Now, those who do not do this, <laughs> those who are not subjective, those who no, do not see. Now here they have already come to a point where the seeker has come to know that he is the Atma. But now the journey from this chapter till the 15th chapter is how this Atma is Paramatma. They are not different. If he does not do that, it will lead to misery. <laughs> then continuing. Vayu Suryo Vannirindro Mrityur Janmantarendaram Krutva Dharmam Vijanantopi Asmad Bhitya Charantihi Although knowing Dharma very well. Now this is a very important point for us to all contemplate also. Although knowing Dharma very well in their earlier lives, the gods like air, sun, fire, indra and death have maintained a duality. Now, under the fear of Brahman, these gods are compelled to be engaged in their fields. So, being dharmic, being all that, all that is okay. But don't lose the crux. <laughs> all these fellows can answer all your questions. Uh, Nachiketa was answered perfectly, you know, the Kathopanishad. But is he a realized person? Has he attained Brahman? He knows of Brahman. They can, compared to masters on this world, all these gods can give you fantastic exposition on the various scriptures. But do they know, like you are doing, the same gods are there. <laughs> Have they known <laughs> that <laughs> Paramatma? No. So don't, if they have not known, what is our state? Don't, don't get caught up into anything. Everything is useful. Make it use, use it only to become subjective. A point must come that every experience, every thought, every situation, every event of our life must prompt our attention back to the subject that we are. If that is happening, then we have done our studies, then 
our japa has fulfilled itself because now we are not using specific activity it has become all encompassing every moment our sadhana inadvertently is taking place <laughs> see then he says he quotes some scriptures and one more thought is there then uh, it is said in the scriptures that one has purpose to go through prarabdha sanchita and agami karma before getting liberated so how is it possible that the man of wisdom is untouched by his karma and karma phala how is he so here there is a uh, very famous verse you must have heard before vidyate hrudaya agranti chidyante sarva sanjaya kshiyante chasya karmani tasmin drishte paravare when the wise man the knower of brahman comes to know the unmanifest and the manifest aspect of the self the knots of the heart are cut asunder all his doubts are destroyed and all his karma and the results are nullified we cannot remove every subconscious impression which as some places it said as vasnas we cannot remove our vasnas because we don't know how many are there what we can do is generate the fire <laughs> so that these fellows get burnt and that fire cannot be generated by thinking about them if you think about them they become desires if you give attention and value to the vasnas when they appear manifest themselves they become desires so what is the way to go beyond them to be immune to them in spite of them become subjective contemplate on the self in that heat of contemplation all these vasnas become null and void like that burnt rock this burning of vasnas itself is vidyate hridaya garanti so here the teacher uh, swami ji says when this man of wisdom has discovered his nature in both para and avara these terms para and avara can be in interpreted in two ways very beautiful uh, explanation he has given these differences between para and avara do not exist in me i am equally present in both they are my manifestations i am not only the conscious but the matter also he who knows this in whom the difference of knower known that is consciousness and matter is totally gone has the complete vision in your house when i explain when you come to the hridaya granthi meaning not granthi hridaya chakra a seeker if you are doing the naam jap vaikari madhyama pashyanti para then when the energy the, the, the when it becomes unmanifest and starts moving at the uh, uh, anahat chakra it become you become distinctly aware of consciousness and matter as two separate and i am the consciousness everything else is matter just like i am swami and every one of you are separate to me no doubt right now isn't it that much clarity comes when this anahat chakra opens up this is not the point given in panchadashi i'm just explaining from ang another angle and when you contemplate now once you have come to know that you are consciousness and everything else is other than you automatically then who is who am i natural enquiry uh, begins that enquiry doesn't begin because you have studied or because you have heard somewhere it begins because you are now it's your direct experience that i am the consciousness and everything else is other than consciousness everything else is other other thoughts then the question is who am i this natural uh, inquiry into what is this consciousness is the neti neti first part <laughs> huh? but it must happen as a result of japa or whatever sadhana you are doing even in this contemplation it must come to that point when you are sitting by yourself if you are thought who am i okay begin but if you are doing pranayam or if you are doing naam japa it must lead to this and when you concentrate on the 
focus on the uh, the consciousness what is this consciousness who is this i that i am who is observing everything else and knowing that all this else is not me then it goes deeper and deeper and you come closer and closer and the more you contemplate on who is this i to that extent all the other thoughts which you were thinking to be you or cannot be without them they start dissolving because no attention for them attention is on the self attention is not on the thoughts on the mind so they start dissolving again the same thing starts happening so that is the process of the japa sadhana he who knows this in whom the differences of no are known that is consciousness and matter is totally gone has the complete vision and eventually once we come to know i am the consciousness now this consciousness is the infinite consciousness once you come to know that you are the infinite consciousness directly then consciousness and matter have got no meaning <laughs> because consciousness and matter are only phenomena are only phenomena are only phenomena see every morning you get up the first thing that what happens to you you are not even aware of the world you are not aware of the body you have got no thought in your mind you just know you are isn't it you just know that you are you are in union with yourself absolute but it lasts for fraction of a second microseconds very next moment that i am which is the most uh, natural way to be immediately bifurcates into i am the body so that i am becomes i and consciousness and the body the matter i am breathing i am in bed oh my god i am late for the train Go, story over <laughs> you see but that first moment when you, you even if the eyes are closed and you suddenly become awake you are you thought process hasn't begun begun see so how this multiplies this is how from we lose ourselves and become we get lost into the unnecessary in the last part the conditioned consciousness called the hiranyagarbha is called avara the absolute with the conditionings of the relative world in prashna upanishad prajapati is called avara brahman and para brahman is beyond relative existence therefore paravare is that which is both unmanifest and manifest or transcendent and imminent so that that, that brahman which is is unmanifest also and manifest also right now when majority of the scriptures when we are only approaching them from who am i or i have to vivek vairagya shatka sampati what is the last one mumukshutvam when we are only lost in that vivek vairagya we want to get away from everything i am not the body i am not the world i am not the mind i am not the rest but here in anand uh, in these last five chapters it's all inclusiveness whatever you got rejected before so that you could come to yourself now that self has to again sahasra shirsha purusha sahasra aksha sahasra it has to include everything and that is the ultimate avail there's nothing after that and this is how the great mahatmas function through the uh, those who are living mahatmas they function that way here it is told this the discovery of happiness uh, uh, sorry therefore this mahatma has no karma no kama for seeking any other form of happiness nor undertake any karma to fulfill any desire from an external source the discovery of happiness within and absence of dependence in uh, is realization in the wake of this self knowledge the entire progeny of ignorance kama and karma are undone this act of undoing does not create anything only that which had appeared as a result of the entanglement of the self with the ignorance has been disentangled that is the untanglement of the hridaya granthi 
chidyate hridaya granthi uh, vidyate hridaya granthi means that knot which was a seeming knot has been undone that's all so we have got caught up in our own thinking and our thoughts have created the knot and we are coming out of that knot and that coming out of that knot is not possible by thinking about that knot <laughs> it can be possible only by thinking about the atma or as last time i said thinking about something that does not leave behind a conclusion in your mind such thoughts nitya shuddha buddha nitya mukta that i am these thoughts will not leave behind any residue of experience it's an experienceless experience and in that process when we uh, uh, in that contemplation this vidyate hridaya grandi happens and such a person does not get caught up into doing or not doing he does not run away from anything he does not run towards anything he has got no desire for anything uh, he does not go after joys or sorrows from anything in this world because he has discovered that he is of the nature of bliss and with this then that the thought continues it's fascinating it will this is just the beginning of the first chapter of ananda mm -hmm. you can't imagine how to what depth he vidyaranya swami analyzes this we we'll leave it to that hmm? Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Hi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Hi Om. Okay, ma.